right guys, so this is my um, overview of kind of a little bit more advanced on how DSPs and bidding occurs and kind of all the fees that fall into that. So um, bear with me, I'm just gonna use my iPhone to run through this. So um, a website visitor basically comes to a website, so that's the publisher. Um, the publisher, I'm gonna skip SSPs and stuff like that, but that gets sent to an exchange. Um, an exchange then holds an auction um, and sends that ping to multiple DSPs. So imagine there's a couple DSPs here that it just sent that user ID to. So it sends that over to the DSP um, and each DSP is gonna do its own logic, right? So in that logic, you have fraud checks, um, you store info about the user, you see the last time that user has seen an ad from you or your advertiser, um, you're prioritizing campaigns over other campaigns based on how much is left in in um, their budget, like spendable amounts. Um, and then you do certain things like in the fraud check, you might verify, you know, you as a verified partner like Moat or Integral Ad Science or something like that, um, maybe like a proximic or whatever. But those are all additions to your CPM. So you just added a piece there if you wanna do something like that. Basic fraud is all good, but there's companies that that'll just do that in a really nice way, like Moat for viewability. Um, but there's an extra CPM charge there. So you're, in your optimum case, you wanna run um, from the publisher directly to the DSP and back without increasing the CPM, which is really hard to do. Um, so that means the DSP has to have a lot of its own technology built and not charge the advertiser for that technology. Um, so in an optimum environment, you'd send it here, you'd send it back, and this would be like 20 cents uh, CPM because that's really, without the middleman, anywhere between 20 and like 40 cents, that's all it is. Um, but that's just not reality. So here's what happens is you come over here and you do some moat stuff, you do some integral stuff, whatever, you pay for an extra CPM there. Um, then you're gonna store info about the user. So that's like their ID, the timestamp we just saw them at, because um, we're gonna use that for the future. Add slot sizes for that page. Um, we might ping uh, Proximic to know more about that page. So we'll look at the page URL scene. Um, they'll tell us whether the ad slot is maybe above the fold or below the fold historically because they're constantly looking at that. Um, so then that's an extra CPM charge there if we use that data. Um, we store the page URL they're seen on because inside that page URL, we might grab things like their previous searches on Google and there's some interesting stuff to do that. So that's search retargeting. Um, and I'll go into another video later on, on that portion. So just remember, remember that. And then you maybe capture their geography. So latitude and longitude, um, which would only be from like in-app, at least accurately is usually just from in-app ad slots. So if somebody's on an app on their iPhone and it says like, do you want to share your location for some reason that the app would use it? And then what in reality happens is they might use it, but they might also sell that to DSPs. So we know their latitude and longitude. Um, and then there might be a geo lookup, like here's their IP address. So you might want to do a max mine database lookup to find, um, you know, kind of a more accurate location because zip codes could be, multiple miles, at least you'd get something with that. Um, you can also do verifications and whatnot, uh, check for common locations. Like for example, you might get a latitude and longitude from an app, but that thing might be completely wrong. They might be fraudulently sending you ones and telling you they're real, but in reality you can do lookups and see that they're like common locations such as city centers or something like that. Um, now going back up here, so let's say after all that stuff, we decide on a on a bid price um, or actually let me let me jump back down here so uh, what if we want to know more about the user like what if we don't know much about this person but we have clients that want to buy people in market for cars and for some reason we don't know who this person is then we might use a data segment so if the customer has a blue Kai or data logic data segment selected like in market for auto, then we'll just go over here and go, okay, they're in market for auto because they're in this segment from blue Kai. Um, blue Kai or data logics will then charge us a boatload. So I mean, really 
um, well-segmented users could be upwards of a dollar fifty CPM, three dollars extra added onto that original like sixty-seven cent average that you see if you just do this once. Um, so there you go. That's four hundred percent increase on your on your price. I'm just doing averages here, and it gets crazy. The other thing here is um, we'll go into third-party data later, but what they do here isn't necessarily like mean that this user is actually in market, it could be a really bad segment where the person just went to like cars.com and therefore they're telling us it's in market and charging us $3 extra to, to hit that person. It's just not very viable and I think a lot of people overlook this stuff because it's sexy and it sounds cool when you're selling um, to an advertiser. So let's go back up here. Let's say we decide on the bid price, we do our logic and then we ping the exchange with our price. Let's say other DSPs also ping the exchange with the price and for some reason, none of us won because it just it didn't meet the publisher's minimum for that slot. So what the exchange will do if it has no bidders is a lot of times, um, because exchanges only have certain DSPs connected to them, a lot of times they'll go to other exchanges or other networks and say, hey, do you have any buyers for this person? But they'll add a, a charge in here just for them. So they'll make a little bit but it all adds up. Then it'll go to an exchange two, and if they, DSP two doesn't buy, and there are other people, then they'll do the same thing, go to exchange three, and this is like basically the waterfall. This is referred to as a waterfall in a sense. And then if you get to exchange four, these might be the DSPs that are maybe new and up and coming DSPs, but they don't have integrations with the big exchanges yet because these guys have ridiculous minimums and usually are like venture backed by far like $70 million rounds and it's nuts. So then you get down here, this DSP buys it, but there's like four middlemen in between here now. And now you're paying even more on top of all this other stuff that you just paid for. So then that finally gets to the publisher. Um, and then you have the ad server. So if the DSP has its own ad server and somehow they don't charge you for that, which is really unlikely, then you'll pay for it here. So then you have like maybe Google DCM tags or something like that, and that's where their ads are served from. So the images are loaded, you're charged for bandwidth, you're charged for all sorts of stuff, that's extra on top of your CPM again. Um, I would say roughly 15%, like five to 15%. Um, and then your ad is finally shown, the stats for the ad are sent back to the DSP, and then they'll do like post-bid analysis, like did that act ad actually get seen? Was it on a viewable slot? Um, you know, how many clicks came out of that? And then you'll do fraud checks for, you know, domains with high click rates versus like the impression volume that I, they actually saw. And they'll start eliminating those things. So that's why you need like high budgets for certain campaigns because you need a lot of money to go through the system to figure out what's gonna work, what doesn't work, and then optimize your campaign out. So it's a per campaign basis. Um, certain ad slots might not work, all that kind of stuff. But this is just a general understanding of how many middlemen are, are in the bid flow to begin with. And this is barely anything. I mean, there's hundreds of companies that could plug into a DSP and be used um, to take another cut before your ad gets there. And you never know that. So when you talk to a DSP and they're like, hey, you know, our fees like 10, 12%. Yeah, that's great. But then you end up paying all these extra fees. And next thing you know, you got like a 10 to $15 CPM. And don't even get me started on fraud. Because if these checks work, that's super cool. I haven't seen anybody that does it amazingly well yet to the point where to eliminate it. But it's an estimated 60% of all these ads that you just bought here are fraudulent fake bots. So it's like buying a billboard behind a tree um, with Google cars with no drivers in them driving past it. Completely pointless. So um, when you think of your CPM now being $10, if 60% of them are out, let's just call it 50 to make math simple, then you just spent $20 CPM to get a dude for a lead that you need at like three bucks at the end of the day. So it's really easy to do the math and see that something's not gonna work if you use all these third-party companies and you're not at the top of the chain. So one of the ways to get to the top of the chain is, so you don't wanna be one of these DSPs necessarily. You get aggregators like, maybe like a bid switch exchange in here, which basically aggregates exchanges, takes 12% or whatever the heck their percentage is on top of their percentage, if there's an exchange up here, and then they go 
sell them to DSPs and do the waterfall again. Most of the time it's like tier three pages, really bad stuff. Um, you know, and it's just like, it's just crazy how it gets like this. Um, and then the other thing that DSPs will do is the big guys that have tons and tons of money and they know they're going to buy a certain number of ad slots per month, guaranteed, they'll go to the big boy exchanges and they'll say, hey, you know, I'll front X millions of dollars and I'll, I'll buy X number of ad slots over the next month. So give me priority over these other DSPs. So what happens is they'll ping that DSP, see if they want to buy it. And then if they want to buy it, they get a certain rate and they also get it in front of everybody else. So they could get the first impression that then they get attributed the first conversion for by the ad server at a later date just because they won that first one and they were prioritized. Then this DSP kind of gets screwed, even though they're the actual one that might have made the real conversion. They just got it first, so it's it's kind of messed up there, um, and and it's hard to get those tier one nice page views um, when these guys are buying from the exchange direct um, up front with tons of money. So just certain things to think about when you're building a system, um, how to get in front of that, how to cut your margins, pretty by a lot to even make it into that pool where you can buy and still generate an ROI for an advertiser. So this is just a really quick mock-up here. And in my next videos, I'll go over things like third-party data, fraud checks, uh, everything that's going on in, in fraud, viewability, um, ad blocking is a big one on the ad server side. Uh, it's just interesting to know because a lot of people don't, don't talk about this. Um, and it's kind of overlooked almost as bad as the housing market in 2008. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, check out my next video.